Joe, what are your final thoughts for, for this audience? See, Michael always asked the tough questions at the end here. <laughs> <laughs> when I was writing my book, the editors asked the same thing. What do you want to leave, leave your, your readers? So maybe I'll tell you one story that, 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 I, that I have in my me memoirs. Matter of fact, it's the reason why uh, I t entitled the book Ordinary Heroes, because it speaks about all of us. Um, December of 2014, the new One World Trade Center was rebuilt. And the, the Port Authority, who runs the building, asked me to, to, to come, and, and they, they were going to give me a tour of it. So I, I certainly accepted it. And it was kind of a weird feeling walking into <laughs> into the One World Trade after all these years. The building was very pristine, it looked beautiful. They took me up in a, in a fast elevator. Um, and I, I, I thought about, you know, before then, I thought about that terrorism and 9-11 was not just an attack against New York or the Pentagon or in Pennsylvania or an attack against the United States. It was an attack against all of humanity. And 9-11 gave us a voice. It gave us a voice of all victims of terrorism. As you look at the four of us we can say that we're a victim of terrorism, and all of you. But our collective voice is what's important, that we collectively can say that terrorism, whether international or domestic, is a crime against humanity. But my Port Authority took me to the top of the building to the very top. We went out, uh, secure stairs, and then we climbed the metal um, exterior stairs to that ring right below the, the, uh, the antenna. We were as high as we could go, and, um, and I overlooked New York and, and, uh, and New Jersey, and it, it, it took my breath away. And then, they asked me, what, what, typically what Mike's asking now is, can you, can you leave us with something? Can you write something on this steel for generations to come? And I said, sure. And I thought a little bit. And I thought of two questions that people asked me after 9-11. The one question is, what is a hero? And my definition of a hero is one who does ordinary things, but in an extraordinary time. And that's what you heard of the stories today, and many more of our firefighters, and our EMS, and our law enforcement doing ordinary things, but in an extraordinary time in history. But then I thought of the second question people asked, which was much harder. Matter of fact, it was the hardest question I was ever asked in my career, and perhaps my life. Because it comes from family members. And it's what every chief Every commander of any unit dreads to hear. They ask, why did my loved one have to run into the burning towers? Why did they have to run into danger? 
And it took me a long time to come up with the answer to that because it wasn't enough to say it was our job. But the answer was right in front of all of us. We ran into the towers that day, into danger at the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania. So others may live. So I took out my marker and I wrote on the steel, always remember the heroes who did ordinary things, but in an extraordinary time, so others may live. And we continue to do that today, running into danger. And it's up to all of us to make sure we work together so the people that we send into danger can go home to their families. Thank you very much, Joe. Well, Joe and Jim, Chris and Sal, on behalf of this audience and also our online viewers, I'd like to thank you for sharing your, your personal experiences and perspectives with us this morning. And also thank you for your phenomenal contributions to the fire service, to public safety, homeland security, this country and abroad, really. Um, certainly your contributions are tremendous and have made us better as a fire service and certainly in public safety uh, uh, writ large. So if you would please join me in a round of applause for our distinguished and incredibly special uh, panelists. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Joe Minogue, retired FDNY lieutenant and NFFF FDNY liaison. Good morning, everyone. What an amazing demonstration of individualism from the people sitting up here before us. So I would ask everyone um, to continue the ceremony with a memorial to 9-11, 20 years ago. So if you'd please stand if you're able, as the Charlotte Fire Department begins our ceremony. Thank you so much. Um, if everyone can take a seat. And I'm going to ask the, the pipes and drums to play a song that we've heard many, many times, Amazing Grace.
Thank you so much. A round of applause for the pipes and drums and the collie guard, please. My name is Joe Minogue. I'm a retired lieutenant from the FDNY, and I'm currently the liaison to the FDNY for the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. One of the best parts about me being the liaison to the FDNY is I still stay in contact with the fire service, which is, which is great. The other part is the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation. Ten weeks before 9-11, Ron Sarnicky, the current executive director, became the executive director. And on 9-11, he assembled a team of professionals to respond to New York. One of those members are here in the audience today. From September 12th to this day, the foundation is still a partner with the FDNY. As well as a partner with the rest of the fire service in this country. When a department is in need for a line of duty or how to prevent a line of duty death or injury, the foundation is there for you, for your members, and the families who've lost a loved one. With our contribution to the FDNY, we unwittingly and gratefully has helped many departments around this country, first responders, firefighters, with the Counseling Services Unit responding to horrific events around the country and helping others. That is one of the growths that came out of 9-11. I was honored to work for Chief of Department Sal Cassano and later on Commissioner Sal Cassano before I retired. And he made a comment about relying on the people below you. Because they're not truly below you, they're standing with you. And a leader recognizes that. The partnership with other branches of service highlighted today is where we are now. And in, in that, I would like to thank the San Antonio Fire Department, who's here today, because that's where this conference is going next. They helped us yesterday place 343 pitches of the FDNY members who perished 20 years ago on September 11th. They also helped us put up 253 members of the fire department who have lost their lives since. I want to thank everyone in this room, everyone behind the scenes, for making this memorial possible. When we work together, we can accomplish anything. So the FDNY, as well as the fire service, as we were talking, has come a long, long way. So it is a lot of positive things that we would like to highlight moving forward for our families, for ourselves, and what we've done with the foundation in partnership with the FDNY is produced a documentary looking at the growth and resilience of the FDNY. Why? Because it's a true story true story of commitment, of valor, of resilience. And everyone in this room can take that back to your family, to your community, and make a change, if, if you need to, of what we went through or what we learned. So I thank you for the time of being up here and we're going to continue the ceremony. And I would like to um, acknowledge everyone around the country 
who has helped the, uh, the FDNY move forward in our biggest time of need. But I also want to remember three communities that were affected. One is Pennsylvania. So if you're from Pennsylvania, could you please rise and represent Shanksville? If you're from the D.C. metro area, Arlington area, you please rise and represent those people, those families that were lost. If you're from New York, please rise and remember those people. Well, I ask the, at this point the rest of the audience to please rise for a moment of silence, if it's possible for you to stand. Forty innocent lives in Shanksville lost. 125 lives in the Pentagon lost. 61 people that were in the air to crash into the Pentagon lost. That day, 343 FDNY members lost. 37 members of the Port Authority lost. 23 NYPD lost. Nearly 3,000 lives in the World Trade Center lost their lives that day. Thank you. Let us pray. God in heaven, we thank you for all of the men and women who paid the ultimate sacrifice on 9-11. Now, God, we ask that the spirit of the sacrifice would not just live in our hearts and minds, but would be lived out in our daily lives, on and off the job. And God, we pray that this week you would continue to bless us and keep us. That you would make your face to shine upon us and that you would be gracious to us. That you would lift your countenance upon us and that you would give us peace. And that you would continue to protect us all as we serve your people, serve your world. We thank you for it all now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>